Okay. Um, we are on the way. We're getting started. How do I minimize all these pages? Okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to share this LOP question paper. So uh, we can see question one. Question one says, uh, have we all have we all completed this assignment, or do you still have some questions that you need to you need to complete? I'm complete with T. It's just I need some clarity and discussions and things, yeah, to feel okay. more comfortable for submitting. Okay, yeah. okay, no problem. Uh, since we're going to be discussing, I think I need my textbook too here. I'm not sure it is, but yeah. So uh, thank you for that. If uh, there's anyone who hasn't completed, it's not a train smash. You can still uh, complete it after today's session. Um, I will try and move as fast as I can so that we can be able to get to, uh, to other modules, which will be LFL and ISL. I am super tired. I have had the longest two days ever. So yeah, but anyway, let's start from question one. Uh, please guys, if you, if you type something on the chat, uh, at this time that I'm sharing the screen, I might not be able to see that or to get a notification. So if you see that it has, your message has been up there for, for a while and I didn't respond to you, you are very welcome to unmute and... Uh... Hi, Tanya, we're doing um, law of persons. So uh, if, if you see that I haven't replied to you, uh, maybe for like five minutes or something like that, then um, please just unmute and go for it. But can I ask that all the mics are off during this session? Okay, so we're on question one. Uh, this question is a 15 mark question. So Mr. and Mrs. X are married, are a married couple from Peter Maritz back during a, uh, during a short stay at a resort in Bloemfontein. Mr. X went missing during an early morning hike at the resort. 10 years have passed since Mrs. Who went missing? Hi, sorry guys. Mrs. X went missing during an early morning hike at the resort. 10 years have passed since Mrs. X went missing. All searches were unsuccessful. Mr. X, meanwhile, has fallen in love. Hi, Mr. X, smart. Yo, with Z and um, would like to marry her. He approaches the High Court of South Africa in Free State, Bloemfontein, and applies for an order of presuming the death of Mrs. X. So um, let me just make this bigger. I was struggling there. Okay, so answer the following questions. Did Mr. X approach um, the correct court? What is the process? We, we spoke about this before. I would assume that all those familiar names that already know me by name and last name will know that we discussed this before. Um, I'm not gonna start picking, but I will start picking if nobody tells me. So did Mr. X approach um, the correct court? Does anyone wants to give that a shot? Because we see here, uh, yes, no, we, Daniel, go for it. Yes, yes. No, we did not. Uh, why? He's supposed to approach the high court where the instant okay. It's uh, yeah, that, that that is correct. That is a. Uh, a matter of jurisdiction, right? Yes. Uh, so he approaches the High Court of South Africa. Hey, all these things popping up. Okay, uh, High Court of South Africa in Free State and applies for an order of presumption of death for Mrs. X. So are uh, you saying he approached the wrong court because he was supposed to approach which High Court? What? Do, which High Court do you think he should have he should have approached. 
Yes, where the incident occurred. Uh, please, where the incident occurred. Where the incident occurred. Remember. No. <laughs> Peter Maritzberg. Re remember, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm not sure. I don't know who it is, but thank you for that answer. Uh, remember, uh, Daniel, uh, the, when um, uh, Miss, Mrs. X went missing, Mrs. X did not live in, um, in Bloemfontein in Free State. So if, if he, uh, Mr. X, approached um, the, the, Bloemfontein, um, the Bloemfontein High Court, uh, that court doesn't have jurisdiction over that particular matter because that is not where Mrs. X is from. Mrs. X is from Peter Maritzberg. So let's say, for example, um, if, if let's say you are correct with your answer, I, I don't want to give it away. Let's say you are correct with your answer, but then if they had to, because one, one of the processes is that um, there needs to be a, maybe a, a, a published article on a newspaper to say Mrs. X is missing. If they publish that newspaper in Free State and they, nobody knows Mrs. X in Free State. Uh, so, so it would be very difficult for them to, to be able to find her in that particular area because um, Mr. and Mrs. X lives in, 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 in Guazulu Natal. That's why they're supposed to approach that particular court. It's a case of jurisdiction. Are we happy with that? Are we happy that somebody has a different view, different opinion? Question, comment, okay, there's a message. I have a question. Very much happy, that's uh, Daniel. Yes, uh, please go ahead. Uh, you said in KwaZulu-Natal, it's uh, Peter Marisberg in KwaZulu-Natal because I'm not from South Africa. Ah, uh, okay, yes. So, so Wazulu Natal is the is the province. That's where Peter Maritzburg is. But the jurisdiction will be Peter Maritzburg because Wazulu Natal is quite big. So, uh, they could not have reported it at any other place than in Peter Maritzburg. So, yes. Uh, to answer your question, uh, Peter Maritzburg is in Wazulu Natal. Okay, uh, anyone else has a question before we move to the second part? Uh, Dr. Kenzani, go for it. Please unmute and go for it. Oh, yes, I got it now. Um, sorry, I, I missed it. You know, we've got load shedding here and the things are just on and off here. Okay. So are we saying he approached the wrong court? Yes, he did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because of the jurisdiction. Yes, yes. Uh, Free State doesn't have jurisdiction over the matters of people that live in, 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 in Peter Maritzburg. So even if, even if the incident happened in, in Peter Maritzburg, in, in Free State, sorry, even if the incident mm -hmm. happened in, in Free State, uh, that particular court in, in, in Free State doesn't have jurisdiction over that matter because they do not live there. The procedure is that they have to they have to apply at a place where they live. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, Thank you. Yeah. That uh, we discussed that as well under under domicile uh, for those that uh, attended the domicile um, session. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Like Thank you instance, so much. Like for instance, if the matter is to be published in the local newspapers, like our lecture said. If it's promoted in, let's say, I stay here in Pochistrum, Northwest. If it's published from here, mm. the people who are within the jurisdiction of Northwest are the only ones who will be able to go through the published newspaper on that matter or the gazette matter. So unlike if I go to KZN and open the case there where I don't stay, that means the people in KZN, they don't know Mr. Mandla Tawana. Mr. Mandla Tawan is only known in the Northwest in his address where he stays. Thank you, sir. 
Yes, that is that is very correct. Uh, who was speaking? Is it Mr. Mandla Dawan? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, um, read page 47 of the textbook. Yeah, that is the reference there if you want to go and read about it. I'm not sure which textbook you guys are using. I'm using a different textbook. So um, thank you for that, guys. Thank you, Mandla. Um, can we move on now to the to the second part of the question? T, before we move on, they need to explain as well. I, uh, the who, wants, who wants to explain that for us? Does anybody wants to explain that for us? Come on, guys. We discuss this. Uh, Daniel, do you wanna do you wanna give it a try? Should I come to the rescue? I will, guys. Give it a try. Who wants to give it a try? You know, uh, today I am not uh, supposed to give out answers. Uh, does anybody wants to try, or do you guys want to? Do you want us to leave that particular question? and come back to it later. Uh, I if, if, you can, if you can allow me, I, I just want to comment on this. Um, I think I... the confusion, I want to comment on the confusion that I have personally. Uh, I was under the impression that the High Court is stationed in Bloemfontein. So um, I didn't know that it can be in Peter Marisberg, it can be anywhere else. Excuse my ignorance. Oh, no, it's uh, it's not being ignorant. Uh, thank you for that. So each uh, each province has a high court, but I, I, I'm not sure which one. There is uh, there is a province that I, I hate that it doesn't have a high court. I actually don't remember which one. So I don't think it's I'm going to- It's Mpumalang. It's Mpumalang. I think it, yes. Okay, all right. So, um okay let me have a look here uh somebody else wanted to speak about the the application i'm uh, the one who wanted to speak but it's not about the application Ah, uh, okay Okay. Does anyone... uh, yeah, no. I wanted to let you know. I wanted to let you know that we quiet because not all of us are doing LOP. So don't look at the numbers and say we've got <laughs> thirty-one people and only like two are participating. We I'm here for LFL and ISL. Ah, oh, okay. I, I I do understand, Nozi. Uh, thank you. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yes, let's fix something. Yeah. Yes, Ntlantla. Yes, Mpumalanga does have a high court in El Spray. It does have a high court. Yeah, but it was, I think it was open two years ago. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so so I think um we have to, yeah, we have to fix that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So you guys know Ntlantla is from Mpumalanga. They do have a high court, so I think maybe our I think books need to be amended. I think all the provinces do have. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, the, you have Eastern Cape uh, Division with its main seat in Grahamstown, uh, Free State Division with its main seat in Bloemfontein, Gauteng, it's Pretoria, KwaZulu Natal, it's Peter Marisbeck, Limpopo, it's Polokwane, Mpumalanga, it's Mbombela, Northern Cape, Kimberley, Northwest, it's my gang. Western Cape, it's Cape Town. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Mandla. 
Uh, I see there's a message on the chat. Yes. Uh, the question says, uh, the question asks if Mr. X approached a, a right call. Yeah. Which, uh, which, which the answer is no. Yeah. Either you say no or no, he didn't. And then uh, the part of jurisdiction and the part of um, the point of the gazetting and everything, it formed part of already explanation. When you say explain, you just elaborate more because it's six marks. But we are, I think we are wasting time, guys. Do you, do, you just think, on do, do you think that is enough? Not enough. Oh, oh, I, yeah. I currently oh, have done with my assignment, but I didn't have any uh, book with me. I'm just on my own attending. Okay, I, I'm, I, just gonna, I'm just going to touch on that briefly. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Let me just touch on that briefly. I'm not going to give the direct answer, so you will choose how you're going to, to, to elaborate more on uh, the, the, the question, the screen just disappeared on me. So I am not able to see that particular question again. But um, so when, when applying for the, the, the order of presumption of death, that can take uh, in two forms. Uh, we did discuss this previously, that it's either in, um, in the terms of common law or in terms of statutory provisions. So we also say that the statutory procedure is an alternative procedure that can be used to obtain a, pre a presumption of death in the cases of which um, a person died of unnatural causes. The statutory procedure does not, however, exclude common law procedure and any interested person can approach the court in terms of the common law procedure. And so now this uh, person that we're talking about, it's Mr. X because now he's the interested party is the one that wants to get married. And then, um, so we, we also know that um, the interested party can apply to the high court in whose uh, area the missing person lived at the time of his or her disappearance. So we already established that um, the court that he applied was the wrong court because of the jurisdiction, because um, the, 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 the law says it has to be reported at a place that um, the missing person lived at that time. So we know now that the missing person, that is Mrs. X, she lived in, um, in Peter Maritzbeck. So now the interested person who is Mr. X, he must also convince the court on a balance of probabilities. Do you guys remember that when we spoke about that? On a balance of probabilities, that the person is more dead than alive because he is trying to convince the court so that now he can uh, move on with his new bear somewhere in the world. So um, he has to convince the court that the Mrs. X is more dead than uh, she is alive. So when, when, when she's convincing the court, she, she, he is the one that is supposed to come up now with all this evidence that, okay, my wife would have would have contacted me, even if maybe she was angry or something like that, she would have at least contacted her sister, whatever reasons that he have, that there is no way that he wouldn't have uh, contacted uh, so and so because we know people talk. And then um, at that particular time, he, he also needs to, to, to provide to the court that if he didn't contact, if she didn't contact me, she could have at least contacted this person. And um, there will be obviously a particular person that would have heard from her or something like that. He can bring all those people together and say, okay, she could have at least contacted this person because at this time he is trying to convince the court so that they can issue that um, order of presumption of death. Are we happy with that, guys? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, Sorry, may I ask something? Yes, please go yeah. ahead. You know, the, the more we talk about this, is the more I see how much I fumbled and I've submitted that in assignment. Oh my Do God. I have another chance of submitting okay. the second one and withdraw the first one? Okay. Are you asking me or you're telling me? Sorry, I might have got that wrong. No, I'm asking. I'm asking because I've submitted already. Do I, I have, I'm still new here. So I want I, to know, I, do I have another opportunity to submit the same assignment? 
I, I am really, I'm really not sure with regards to the to the submission procedure. I have had some students from the group saying that they can, um, uh, after you get the first result, then you are able to, to, to submit again. Yes, Tanya confirms that you can. I uh, says you can't delete, but you can. So I think, I, I, I do think that is correct, Tanya, because mm -hmm. sometimes when you submit, you, they might give you another option to submit as long as it is before the before the due date. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, okay. No problem. Thank you. Uh, uh, Thank DK. You. DK. Yes. All right. Uh, at, at, at the at study of submitting uh, your assignment, they say you are given three chances to resubmit, and every time that you submit a new one it automatically overwrite the old one. So you can resubmit, re but you are given three chances. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Guys, um, my uh, screen disappeared on me. I'm not able to see the question. So I'm just gonna close that particular screen and then I will... Um, Try and see if I can open it again. But can we ask uh, anyone who has the who has the question in front of them if they can uh, if they can read the next question so that we can uh, keep going? So sorry, Mr. T. Yes, Mr. Sir. Yes, I heard you guys. I said the answer here is no. For one, uh, like uh, question one. Yes. Okay. That's what they say. I didn't say that. They say that. Oh no! I wanted to, I wanted to tell uh, my fellow students to go and read again that uh, that section the four point three point one of the presumption of debt. Yeah, that's yeah. a good advice. Please, because uh, I no, I won't also say so uh, much, but they must go and read it again. Okay. Uh Guys, I, I can no longer see my 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 questions, so I'm gonna use my phone to 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 check those questions. Uh, can can I please have um any one of you to read the following question? It yes. Uh, B it says, is it necessary for Mr. X to convince the court that Ms. X is dead? Explain the burden of the proof of Mr. X. Uh, definitely, I I think I think I did um I, I think I did cover that on that particular on my explanation. Do you guys agree with me? Yes. I I, I think I did. Did anyone miss? Yes, you, yes, you did. Okay. Uh, so if we but are here. Yes, go ahead. It is just um, what would you add to say that he has to convince the court? Uh, sorry, please say that again. I missed that. You did add and you did say that he must convince the court. Yes, on a balance of probabilities. Uh, the question talks yeah. about the burden of proof as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's also saying that she's more dead than alive. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So is everyone happy? Uh, can we move on? Okay, see, which factors are considered by the court in an application for a presumption of death order? That sounds like an easy one, right? Yes, the four factors is visible in your textbook. Uh, does everyone agree? Yes, I agree. They're on 4.3. Yes, 4.31. Uh, did you guys get that? We're not. Yes. 1.2. What are the consequences of an order of presumption of death? Uh, is that the is that the next question? Yes, it is one point two. Ah, oh, okay, okay. 
uh, the consequences, guys. Does anyone wants to tell us the consequences? You said, uh, I think, Daniel, you said you, ha you have the textbook there. Do you want to read it for us, maybe? I know that, I, I, I know that um, one of the, one of the consequence, let's say, uh, I, I'm just going to give you one. Let's say that person had life policies and um, the policies of those um, of that particular person. Let's talk about Miss, Mrs. X now. Mrs. X is the one that went missing. So if she had life policies, uh, those policies will be paid out to the beneficiaries, but there's a condition. And I did give you guys the, the Latin name for it. And I am not going to say that condition. I'm just, I just want to um, let you guys know that we, we spoke about that. Um, so that is one of the conditions. And uh, do, you guys, do you guys remember? There is actually a session that is dedicated to that. That I did, that is dedicated to the presumption of death. Uh, does anyone has a question there or is it blank? There is no judgment, guys. We need to submit this assignment on the 26th. Is everyone okay? Guys? Are you guys still there? Yes. Are, are you guys okay with that? With that? Yes. Oh, okay. So, so should we move on? Okay. So, if you guys are okay, a few people said they are okay. I don't know if they speak for the majority. And I see we have about forty people in the session. I know some said they are not here for LOP, but um, I would assume that the ones that asked, that said that they are okay. <laughs> They're speaking on, be on behalf of the majority. Hi, Dumi. Uh, so if it does happen that we moved on from this question and you still have a question, possibly you, you feel shy or something, you are very much welcome to text me and then we can talk about it. Is that okay? Okay, so uh, let's move on to... Uh, okay, we said C, which factors are considered. Okay, we spoke about that. We spoke about the consequences of an order of the presumption of death. Uh, those consequences, I have three actually in front of me. Uh, remember, okay, okay, let, let's 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 deal with this. Uh, no, it's fine, it's fine, Tanya. Uh, let's deal with this before we move on, so that everyone is on the same page. Remember. The other consequences, uh, what Mr. X is doing now, right? Mr. X is trying to is trying to get married, right? Should that presumption of order be granted? Do you think Mr. X will be married or will, will get married or not? Uh, LOP people? Obviously he will get married. Yes, he will get married. So, so do we agree with uh, Lois Paloy? So, so, so. Uh, I think, yes, yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm still working around Zoom. It's my first time using Zoom. Uh, yes, um, I, yes, I think I, I, I do agree. Um, once the order has been issued by the court. Do would you think that is a consequence? Uh, no. Why? Um, oh, I still have to go through. So I answer that in, uh, in, in, in a sense of a common, uh, trying to apply common sense. Okay. But I think I still have to go through a textbook just to understand it and explain it better. Oh, okay, no problem. Uh, so, so let's, let's turn tables around. If, if, um, if, uh, I'll be with you now, Daniel. If, if the presumption of death, uh, the, the order is granted, and then Mr. X gets it, 
and then he 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 gets married right to this new sweet 16 of his and then um mrs x shows up the following morning would that not be a consequence for miss mrs x uh go ahead daniel yeah yeah that that, that is what i wanted to mention that it's 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 a consequence because it says uh, even if the presumption is the order is is granted that does not mean it automatically dissolves the merit because this person may or maybe later show up again that's what i wanted to add where where uh, daniel where are you reading that from it's either you read it wrong or you read it from the wrong source. Okay. Yeah. Because if the if the presumption of death is granted, right? The if if it is granted, the marriage will dissolve. And then when yeah, the, course. the marriage will dissolve, you say it will not be dissolved. So the marriage will be dissolved. And then Mr. X will get married. And then when Mr. X gets married, there is no turning back. The marriage is gone. So my understanding is Mr. X would have provided enough evidence to convince the court that obviously um, Mrs. X has been missing for more than 10 years or plus 10 years. Yeah. And obviously they would have tried by all means to try and get all of this person yeah. um, by publishing um, on the local newspaper and the person never came through until that order was granted. Only yeah. they showed up maybe three days later, whereas the marriage has already been um, dissolved by the court of law, of which it's no longer valid. Yeah, so, so the, mar the marriage will no longer be valid. The marriage will be gone and there is no turning back. The only way that they can get back together is if Mr. X can divorce his newly new newly wedded wife, even if it's one day or two days, whatever it is, and then remarry. But otherwise, the the, the marriage will be dissolved, and um, there will be no uh, no turning back. And on the on on the marriage certificate, it will be written that the marriage has been dissolved by death. So that is one of the biggest implications. And the other one, uh, I'll just give it to you. I know the question asked for two. Uh, the other one, um, the the estate of the of the missing person will be divided uh, according to if there is a will or something like that. And then um, there will be a condition, like I, I mentioned with that one. I am not going to give you that condition. You guys have to find it yourself. Or you have to go and watch that video that I did um, for for with, with the presumption of with the presumption of death. Uh, so let's move on. <laughs> it looks like we're not going to be able to get through. Um, we're not going to get through to all those other sessions. But anyway, uh, we'll kill one bit at a time. Uh, question two. Uh, it's fifteen marks. I have now. I have it now on my phone. It says R considers. Uh, being a surrogate for a couple, if she can earn an income from it, the couple sends the agreement to R for signature, discuss the validity of such a surrogate agreement. How would you discuss that with me? So now there is R, I don't know if R is, is Romeo or Ruth? Okay, let's call her Ruth. She considered being uh, a surrogate for a couple, for this rich, famous couple. Um, she is hoping that she can earn an income from it. And the couple says the agreements to her for the signature. Mm -hmm. do, you think, do you think that um, that agreement will be valid? Um, that agreement won't be valid if I, I may say something won't be valid because it's for monetary value. And in South Africa, we we don't do surrogate for, for, uh, for monetary gain. Okay, thank you. Let, let me hold you there, uh, Dr. Kenz. 